All right, so we are going to set up a basic player mod system. Now, player mods is what the name of the component was called back in the triggers, but it's essentially just something that controls your jump height, your walk and run speed, and the likes. And we're going to be doing that using Udon. So let's create a quick Udon graph asset, and I'm going to call it player mods. We'll put that on our player mods object, which is a empty object with an Udon behavior, and open graph. Uh, so I'm going to do a okay. So the way that uh, player mods and the likes are, works in this version is it applies it to your networked local like player information. It it is a complex way of saying the local player, which is just you. Um, so we're going to search VRC player API just to get a variable to house your name in. So uh, VRSDK base VRC player API, and just search player API, it's fastest. So I'm gonna set this just to be called local player because that's all the information we need from that. Now, since we're only setting information once, uh, we can do this all in the start event. So whenever the player mods object is enabled, which is just at the beginning of the scene. Let's just search uh, start. Oh. Start, there we go. Put that there. Now we need to set this variable to be something specific. So I'm gonna get a set var. Put that there. Automatically grabs player local because it's our one variable at the time. Uh, and we need to give it the networked player local. So networking get local player. This just gets information about, I guess, who you are. Um, as like a variable in the world, not like what your or oh, what's your bank account information? <laughs> no. Uh, so we'll just this will apply this to here, and we'll use this variable to uh, do everything else. So let's say we get a set run. Uh, we can just search the word run. It's fastest. Run speed, yeah, run speed. Set run speed. Put that here. Now I'll get the other two we need. Walk speed, set walk speed. And jump height. Uh, jump impulse, sorry. Uh, do walk speed, run speed, jump impulse. All right, so we're gonna need a a float a float value for all of these and if we want to modify them in here we'll just make a public variable for it so we're going to do float variable i'm just going to call this walk speed i'm going to set it to three i believe the default is two so we should see a little bit faster than normal walking uh, Let's duplicate this walk speed run speed set that to six which i believe the default is four and a half i don't recall at the moment and jump height just set this to three as well all right so if we plug all these together we can tell them to use this by using a get variable. There we go. And we'll just select player local for that. And we'll plug this into instance for all of these because the instance of the player that it's working on is the player local. Now we need to get the variable for the walk speed, plug it in, the run speed, and plug it in, 
and the jump height and plug that in. So theoretically this should all work, but there's still one thing I want to point out. Uh, when everything swapped to 2018 for Udon, um, basically it got rid of a lot of the what was called stutter stepping in the old version where you could spam forward and it would skip around. Uh, however, since the devs knew that a few people were making like uh, jumping puzzle maps or the likes or things that required that kind of uh, activity, they allowed that to be a variable in here uh, called uh, legacy locomotion. So if we get a use legacy locomotion, uh, we can set this to be player local. And this is a bit different than the others, where the others would take a float and say yes or no. We need to give it a bool through a if statement or a branch. So let's search branch, put that here, and if this is true, we'll use the legacy locomotion. If it's not true, nothing will happen and everything else goes through anyway. So we're going to need a bool over here called, oop, there we go, called use legacy locomotion, or just whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to default it to false because I'm personally uh, very happy that they finally got rid of that as a uh, puzzle map creator. And... So by default, I'll leave it off. You guys can do whatever you want though. So I'm gonna set this here and plug those in. Now, if use legacy locomotion is active, then it will use legacy locomotion. So everything is showing up in here. Uh, however, as you've seen in the last few tutorials, I don't trust any of this to work. So I'm gonna control D to duplicate, delete the one from the end of this name, Go to player mods and drop this one in. Now let's build this version and see if we get it working. All right, and we've got jumping and our movement is slightly faster than the default is. You may or may not be able to tell that. All right, so now let's close out of this and redo this in Udon Sharp for those who are interested in that. Uh, so I'm just going to create a U sharp script, uh, player mods sharp, just to distinguish it. And I'll, whoop, oh, we have to let it compile here quick. All right. And of course, whenever a new script compiles, we lose the mirrors until we boot everything up. So I'm going to double click this to open it up in Rider. Uh, however, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to open this so we can compare what we did in the graph editor with what we are doing in uh, C Sharp. So we're going to need all the same variables. We will need, let's see, a private uh, VRC player API that I will call local player a public float walk speed walk speed and I'll set that to equal three public float run speed speed equals six public float jump height equals three and a public bool use legacy locomotion. All right, now in start, we need to set the player local val value to be something. So we will do lo local player dot, lo local player equals networking dot, 
local player. And that's local player with a uh, capital L, whereas we're using a lowercase l. Uh, actually, for the sake of brevity, I'll just swap this to be a player to local instead of local player. Now, what I just did there was called refactoring, which is uh, where I selected. Uh, in this program, it's Control R R. Um, it might be the same in Visual Studio. I'm uncertain, but basically, it allows you to rename a variable and it automatically replaces it wherever else it exists in the script. Now, one of the advantages to Udon Sharp, well, you may be able to do this in Base Udon. I just haven't gotten it working yet. Um, is you can check whether or not the local player exists and if it doesn't exist it will we can cancel the rest of the script uh, the reason for that is while you're in unity or in the editor the local player doesn't exist because you're not logged in as like a player that can run around or anything so if nothing exists and it tries to set all these variables, it's like, oh, that doesn't exist. Here's an error, which isn't really something you actually need to worry about. But just for the sake of clearing up our console and not getting errors, we can do something called if player local equals null return. All right, so what this is doing is it's checking to see if player local has any value at all. And if it does, then it won't be null. But if it has no value, it will return. Now return basically just means it looks for the current like end of whatever the bracket section is and skips immediately from here to that. All right, and if it's not null, it'll just do everything else that follows afterwards. So we will uh, uh, set, oh, we need to player local dot set walk speed, and then it puts in parentheses and we can give it walk speed. And then player local dot set run speed, run speed, <laughs> player local dot set jump impulse jump height and lastly if use legacy locomotion and that's if that's true player local dot use legacy locomotion control s to save and that should be our entire script so if we come back here we can let everything compile and that should be everything we need. Go to player mods. We'll swap it out for. Oop, there we go. We'll swap it out for the U sharp script. Just to be safe, I'll let it compile everything. Just to make sure no errors popped up. Seemed to be good. Now we can hit build and test. And get it going. And we can jump and move around. Perfect. So that's everything about a basic uh, player mod setup. Uh, the great thing about the scripting system now is that uh, instead of using the old player mods component, you can actually go around and press like a button in your world that'll interact with the player mods and say, set this, set your run speed to 500 or something like that. Or you can modify run or jump speed. It's uh, something that can be used to set up basic like power-ups or things in your world uh just something that can modify the player in any way um and outside of that that should be it hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time